today, my transport to T5 gets new tyres. The Cross Climate SUV XL. So this is a 2015 T5.1 uh, T30 uh, van. I've converted it into a camp van. When I bought the van, it had the uh, 16 inch alloys, they're called Colmar alloys, with two 15, 16 tyres on it. But after six months, I wanted to upgrade the wheels to 18 inch wheels to make them look better. I chose an aftermarket version of the Volkswagen Scirocco um, turbine wheels uh, that were allegedly um, van weight rated and uh, to be honest I had no issue with that. Uh, that was around about three years ago and uh, the alloys almost look new still uh, but the tyres that I got with it were budget tyres and they've now worn after 25,000 miles uh, down to around about two and a half mil. The maker tyres that are on it are a company called Triangle never heard of them before, can't find any good reviews or can't find any reviews online for them and uh, the grip level though has been very good, I've never had any issues in the wet or dry with uh, any sliding, skidding uh, or traction under acceleration but the downside of them is said hugely noisy, the road noise is just horrendous don't know whether the microphone's picking that up, I'm hoping it does. Uh, and also the ride is um, shocking. On the motorways or highways, uh, A roads, uh, around about 60, 70 mile an hour, they're actually okay. They're quite smooth. But you go into the country lanes and after an hour or so you just get tired. The, they're bouncy. Um, not soft bouncy but harsh so I'm hoping that my choice of tyre today is going to improve that massively I'm going to go for the Michelin Cross Climate SUV XLs the, the rating is 104 for the weight I've already fitted them to my Jeep uh, the weight rating on that is obviously a little bit lower but the improvement was just night and day on that vehicle um, the original tyres were Michelin Primacy 3s, so they weren't bad tyres anyway. But from a ride uh, point of view and also a noise point of view, it was the change was just remarkable. It just floats along the road now, it glides, you can't hear any road noise whatsoever. So I've done something different when I upgraded the alloys to the 18 inch alloys. Standard tyre size for a transporter on 18 inch alloys is 255, 45, 18 I believe. And um, both those and also the original size wheels gave me a 5% error on my speedometer compared to the GPS. Um, I think that's quite standard to be a little bit out on uh, the speed. It obviously errs on the side of caution to trust tries to stop you going over the speed limit which is sensible but I do like it to be quite close but if you search online for tyre size comparison there's a couple of websites come up one of them has a really good comparison uh, tool you can use you can put in the tyre size you've got and you can put in any other tyre size that you want to and it will compare the width of the tyre the sidewall depth of the tyre the circumference of the tyre and various other things as well and it will also give you a percentage difference for the tyre size in circumference to what you were going for. So I played around with that for a little while and I came up with a tyre size which was 23555 18s. The tyre sizes are uh, the, the width and the second size which is 55, 35, 45 or something similar to that. That's not actually a dimension, it's a percentage of the width of the tyre. So I've gone for 2, 3, 5, 55, 18s, which means that my wall 
then on my tyre is 55% of 235 millimetres. That actually gives me a slightly deeper wall than the standard 255-45-18s. Theoretically, that should make the tyre more comfortable. But on these tyres, it doesn't. So one thing I should say is I wouldn't recommend changing the tyre size from the manufacturer's recommended. Uh, you can invalidate any warranty you've got. You need to notify your insurance company. So it can cause increased wear on certain items on any vehicles, so maybe the drivetrain, um, suspension bushes, etc. Uh, but it was my choice, it's something that I've done. My insurance is a camper van insurance, which allows for modifications, so I've covered from that point of view, and also I'm not under warranty anymore. So the tyre size I settled on was 4.4% bigger when you measure the rolling circumference of the tyre. And that almost corrected the error on my speedometer. It was still, the speedometer was still reading slightly slower than the actual speed it was going, but it was a lot closer than the 5% to 6% error that I was originally getting. Now I was also hoping that might make a difference or correct the massive error that these Volkswagens give on the trip computer. The trip computer on my transporter is around about 15% out. If it's telling me I'm doing 42 mile per gallon, I'm not doing anything near 42 mile per gallon. I've done full to full um, measurements so many times and worked out my mile per gallon and it doesn't get close to what the trip computer says. It would have been nice to get 42 mile per gallon, but it just isn't happening. And the van is lowered, it's on 40mm lower H&R springs, but it's on the original shock absorbers. Possibly that could be some of the cause of my erratic suspension. But uh, the tyres are due to be replaced, so before I replace anything else in the suspension, to improve that, I would see how the tyres uh, change things. So the reason for my choice for the Cross Climate SUV XL tyres is uh, quite simple. It's, this is a recreational vehicle. It's something that should be quiet, it should be comfortable, but also should have good levels of grip. So I looked at a lot of tyre reviews and the majority of them seemed to recommend tyres that had ultimate grip in the wet and the dry in summer. And in summer, that really means when it's higher than 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, lots of parts of the world, especially where I live in the UK, there's a good proportion of the year when it's below 10 degrees. So therefore the summer tyres, they start to, um, the summer tyres performance starts to degrade a little bit. So I'd seen some reviews on this cross climate tyre the, the idea of the tyre is it's an all-season tyre, so it does a little bit of everything. But the reviews suggest this is perhaps the first or one of the few tyres made by any manufacturer that actually does most things pretty well. It only gives up a little bit of grip in the wet and dry when the days are warm in the summer. So it still uh, remains pretty safe. But as soon as the temperature goes down below 10 degrees, especially in the wet, this tyre starts to outperform the summer tyres. So it also gives you an amount of uh, winter performance in ice and snow. So that gives a little bit of safety. Now in the UK where I live we don't get an awful lot of snow. Um, but it is something that is um, always worth considering. We do get a lot of temperatures where they are relatively low. Obviously the performance of the tyres in uh, snow and ice don't come close to a proper winter tyre. 
but they massively outperform the summertime. So from my experience, having already fitted into the Jeep and running it through the summer, it seems an exceptional tyre for what I need it for. Obviously on my Jag, I would not fit a cross climate tyre. I would uh, fit the summer tyre to that, something that is relatively high performance. But for a, an SUV or a multi-purpose vehicle like this, I think safety all year round, comfort, quietness, maybe rate very, very highly, especially as this tyre really doesn't drop off too much performance for ultimate grip and road holding. There's no way I'm gonna track this, this van. And the, the, certainly I don't need performance around the Nürburgring like some people seem to be obsessed with. So it'd be interesting to compare the two tyres before and after. So this is the road noise at around about 60 mile an hour. I'm actually doing about 63. So this is the road noise at around about 60 mile an hour, I'm actually doing about 63. So once I change the tyres, we'll run that one again. 